I will have three questions, Vice President. I will be short to give you time to answer comprehensively. My uh, first question uh, is linked to the decision of the Constitutional Court this week. I will just ask a precise question because I guess other colleagues mi uh, might refer to the topic as well. Um, and of course, uh, the decision of the Constitutional Court refers to bond buying programs of the ECB, particularly the PSPP and particularly the principle of proportionality. And my question is, do you intend to make similar assessments of the principle of proportionality to other ECB programs? This is my first question. My second question is linked to the Green Deal, um, a new objective of the European Union. What role uh, can you envisage for the ECB in this process of uh, triggering more green investments and uh, if and how ECB programs can uh, add uh, more investments into greening. And my third question is linked to public debt in Europe. In this new macroeconomic framework, is the ECB worried by the uh, sustainability of uh, high public debt levels and increasing public debt levels, particularly in some, uh, some member states, or is this not the case? Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for your, for your questions. Uh, you know, I will take your your, the different questions you have posed in the in the same exactly the same the same order. First of all, with respect to the constitutional court uh, bullet, well, we have taken note. I would like to stress that we are, you know, the ECB is a, a European institution, and we are subject to the legal framework of the EU, and that uh, you know we are under the jurisdiction of the uh, European Court of uh, Justice, as uh, Madam Chair has uh, indicated at the beginning of this session. And uh, simultaneously, we are accountable. Uh, we have to respond to, to, to you, uh, to the European Parliament. Uh, you are the representatives of the European, the European people, and you know perfectly that we are accountable. The President comes quite often to this, uh, to this House. Also, you know, the, the Chair of the Supervisory Board, uh, myself, and we are always uh, totally open uh, you know, to, to, to cooperate and to collaborate and to, to be fully transparent with respect to our decisions. And uh, finally, let me say that, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, the operational, uh, you know, uh, issues, we are under the control of the, of the Court of Auditors. Uh, recently, as you know perfectly, we signed an MOU with the Court, uh, with the court of Auditors. But uh, I would like to make clear from the very beginning that if you look at the legal framework of the, of the EU, there are two main principles that have to guide our performance, huh? our, our actions in the, in the ECB. The first one is price stability. It's clearly uh, enshrined in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the treaties. And, uh, you know, we are going to do whatever is necessary in order to, to meet and to fulfill, uh, you know, this mandate. And secondly, independence. I think that these are the two elements. Independence from, uh, from governments, uh, from lobbies. Uh, I think that the Covering Council of the, of the ECB takes its decisions, only taking into consideration the mandate that has been, uh, you know, given in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the treaty. And let me say something with respect to monetary policy that I think that is quite relevant. We do not uh, put uh, monetary policy in a sort of ivory, ivory tower at all. When we uh, take our decisions on monetary policy, what we are doing is to, 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 to try to look at, you know, the interactions of monetary policy with other policy instruments, for instance, fiscal policy or structural reforms, because we, need, we know perfectly that there are interactions and leaks uh, among the different, uh, you know, policy instruments. And afterwards, we take into consideration, uh, you know, the side effects of our, of our policies. You know perfectly that, uh, you know, we have been analyzing side effects continuously, hmm? continuously. And, uh, you know, whenever we, we take a decision on monetary policy, uh, you know, I would say that it's a sort of uh, proportionality assessment uh, in terms of the documents, in terms of the, uh, of the analysis, in terms of the research that, that we carry, carry out. And I think that, uh, you know, in, even when you look, uh, you know, our accounts, when we go to the press conference, when the president, uh, you know, and myself go to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the press conference, you immediately realize that we have uh, continuous, uh, you know, questions about uh, uh, side effects. So there is, uh, you know, an important amount of analysis behind the decisions that we take, and an important part of that analysis has to do with the, with the, with the side effects. So having said that, you know, what uh, you know, I would like to stress is that uh, 
uh, uh, we are fully committed with uh, with our mandate. We are going to take all the necessary steps to accomplish mm, our 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 mandate. And I think that uh, you know that's uh, you know the main contribution that we can do, uh, you know, for uh, you know price stability and for the welfare of the of the European people. Respect to the Green Deal, for sure, no, uh, for us it's uh, very, 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 very relevant. Uh, we have started to analyze in detail, for instance, you know, the, the, the implications of uh, you know the green economy uh, in terms of financial financial stability. We are paying a lot of attention to that. We have started to decide and to take decisions in our non-monetary policy portfolios, uh, and we are favoring you know green bonds. And this is something that we are analyzing with a lot of care, with a lot of attention, and I think that you know this is going to be very relevant. As you know, in our strategy review, we announced that one of the, let's say, secondary objectives that we are going to take into consideration, that we are going to bear in mind, is, uh, you know, this uh, question of the Green Deal. So, for us, uh, this is something of paramount importance. And finally, you know, the question of, uh, of public debt. Uh, well, uh, you know, and the fiscal position of the different, the different countries. Well, uh, uh, what I have to say is that, uh, you know, we are in a very difficult moment of time. We are, you know, living in, the, you know, a very... A sharp contraction of the activity, so the fiscal stance has to be expansionary. And afterwards, you know, once the pandemic is is, is over, well, we will have to take measures in order to 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 to, to reduce the public debt ratio and to you know to, to have you know the public finances under 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 control. But I think that we are in a moment of time of using fiscal policy uh, in a very uh, committed and determined way. Uh, in order to face, uh, you know, the, the difficulties that we are going, we are going through, and as I have said before, fiscal policy has a very important role to play, uh, not only at the national level but as well, you know, at the pan-European, the pan-European level. And I think that uh, you know this is the most relevant, uh, you know, issue, the most relevant aspect now in the middle of this crisis. And afterwards, well, I suppose that uh, you know we will have to take decisions in order. Uh, to have, uh, you know, to put, uh, you know, the, the, the public finances in, uh, you know, the correct, uh, the correct path.